So that's it. Cricket season's done and dusted, but we're still going strong. Join us for episode 14 of the Kings Grow Sports Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again, as I said, episode 14 of the Kingsgrove Sports Podcast. Joining me today, I'm Charlie, as you know, this is Stu. Morning, Charlie. And this is Hamish. Good morning. And we're not going to forget, over in the corner, producer Nick. Thanks, Charlie. Hi, guys. It's me, producer Nick. Morning, wow. Nick. <laughs> we're full of energy in this morning. episode. Join us for the next <laughs> hour. We've got a few topics to get through, some controversial, some not. I think we should start there, really. Let's get let's into start some, with the controversy. Get into some cricket controversy cricket. in the IPL. Mm. What happens, Stu? Tell us. Uh, Ravi Ashwin uh, decided to mancat Joss Butler. And what's mancatting when it's at home? Well, mancatting is basically when the um, the bowler is in his delivery stride and decides to uh, take the bowls off and and run the non-striker out who may be trying to get an advantage and creeping out of his crease. Strangely, <laughs> strangely, in some forums they were calling it run out. Yeah, it's misinformed. Yeah. It, it is one of the dismissals or modes of dismissal, mancad. It's officially known as a mancad after the first person that ever did it, I believe. Man-cad. Yeah, unofficially known as a mancad. Officially, it's run out, but I isn't it? In, it's in, yeah, the, no. the, rules, it? Yeah. It's in the rules, isn't it? It's in the rules. I don't know if mancadding is it like an official way to get it. Is I it? Think it is run, no, no, I think it's run out. It's run out. I'll look it I up think it's still run, I think it's still run out, but it's just called a mancad. Oh, I'm not so sure about Ooh. that. Con- I think a oh. mancad is Controversy. Uh, an official way of getting out. So you think Different... that's, that's on the scorecard, is it? We might Joss... have to check that one. Yeah, yeah, Joss it's... Butler, mancad, Ma- mancad. radiatrid. Mancad. No, no, I yeah. think it's run out. Nick, perhaps can you you can inform He's us. Googling it. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a look <laughs> and see if I can find it. Modes of dismissal. Different modes of dismissal. Anyway. Yes. Anyway, I think the so it's controversial. It's not yeah. looked on as something that you know is is in the spirit of the game. Um, mm. Stephen Blomfield might disagree. There's a lot of people that would disagree. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, it, like it's it is a like, I mean, you can get out that way. You can get out. I think it's just mm. how it's done. Yeah. It's think, it's the sneakiness of it, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. the fact is it, it's perfectly within the rules, yeah. but it's okay. You're doing it without the knowledge of. Of the batsman who's who's back. Well, I think up. there's an understanding in the game, the gentleman's game, as we you know, whether the T20 cricket still falls under the, the banner the, the of the gentleman's, gentleman's game, is a different story. But I think there is an understanding that if you're going to do it, you first provide a warning, a warning. to the batsman. Yeah. If you um, see, if you, if the bowler sees him do it, say, look, mate, do it again, and I'll take the balls off. But I don't think that happened. I think also the way Ashwin sort of did it, where he sort of stopped. That's kind of the side story to it, yeah, isn't he, it? Yeah. He, he stopped and, and paused and basically sort of waited for Joss to go out mm. and then took the bales off. Perhaps we can find a video clip to put over the at the top of this. Uh, uh, yeah, I can see if there's a video of the, yeah. the um, man cat in I think question. That's, I, mean, I think that's where the... Where the Th- that's where the debate is split, isn't yeah. it? In that it is, technically speaking, a legitimate mode of dismissal. Mm. But where people are upset about it is that at the point that Ashwin would have released the ball... Joss Butler was still in his crease. Yeah. And Ashwin stopped, let him go out, and, and then, then done it. Yeah. That's where... That's yeah, where he still bit. has the responsibility to keep an eye on the bowler. Yeah. That is mm. the batsman's responsibility. Um, but I think some batsmen in the in game mode sometimes mm. forget it. Um, now, has it ever happened to you guys in, a, no. in an official game of cricket? No. I have been run out at the non-striker's end, but that's not, not in that fashion. Yeah. That was yeah. off the blade of the... It, it happened to me below. once when I was playing in a game in Melbourne, believe it or not. But um, I was absolutely ropeable because um, <laughs> I was probably complacent as a batsman, just backing up as you're taught. Yeah. Maybe not so focused on the bowler, but on what the, uh, the opposite batsman was doing. And then I found myself, and he's there waiting by the stumps. I'm like, oh, he's going to give me a warning here. And he just went, bloop, and I went, you're joking, mate, aren't you? <laughs> and it wasn't even very serious. It was a Sunday game, and he's gone, off you go. Oh, dear. No umpire? Any umpire? Uh, kicking and screaming. Yeah, well, uh, it, is, it is the it's rule out. of the yeah. game. He can't yeah, yeah, sort of yeah. say, no, you must give a warning. No. Um, it technically is. Now, it happened in a one-day game. Uh, I think Sri Lanka were playing perhaps India or someone to, to that effect a few years ago, and there was an uproar because it happened to the Indians. Yes. Um, but the Sri Lankans did provide a warning and the guy then continued to do, do it. it. Now, that 
is actually getting an unfair advantage. Yeah. Once you've been warned and you continue to do it, that's your own mm-hmm. fault. That's yeah. your own fault. I mean, Ash, Ashwin's got form in this regard as well. He's yeah, done it. We he's done it before. It I, think he, I think he did it to to Sri Lanka uh, mm-hmm. a little while ago. So yeah, he's he's got form in it, and so. Yeah. Um, and d- does the fact that he's captain of the the IPL team have any? bearing on it or or realistically oh, look, should he have rescinded at the, the appeal at, at the end of the day you're captain or not i mean he's getting paid to do a job and that's win games at all cost i suppose yeah. at that level uh but at the end of the day it's your own reputation that you will also want to think about now um there's probably millions of cricketers potentially outside of india who are going well that bloke we're not going to really not treat really. him with all that much respect anymore um, so, well, but does he care? Probably not. No. Well, that, I guess that leads to another question in that you, you say at this level, this win at all cost mentality. And when you've got things like the World Cup, uh, the Ashes, Test cricket, this, that, and the other, does winning the IPL matter? I think if you were does talking it, to, the it, yeah, the, uh, to the owners of the franchises, yep. 100%, there's owners uh, of the franchises millions yep. and millions of dollars at but stake w- here. In 30 years' time, when he's retired and he's sitting back and he's telling his grandkids, I won the IPL in 2019. Are they going to look at him and go, so what? Or are they going to go, wow? Well, possibly. I mean, that depends on the future of cricket and how these T20 franchises go and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I think it probably comes down to, I, not I won the IPL, but I earned squillions well, of dollars. dollars. <laughs> yeah, as he's telling his grandkids yeah. in a massive, in a massive yeah. palace. Probably. In a palace, yes. Yeah. Well, when you put it like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's just their cubby house. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, if it's you're looking week, for your answer on the uh, the man, here we go, here we go. So man cat, here's the third. I'm, I'm looking at dismissal in cricket on Wikipedia, which everyone knows is the How many best source of information. 13? 13? No, no, there's not thirteen. Um, Twelve methods of dismissal. Lower, there are. Nine. It looks like there are ten. In they this used list. to be ten. There are now nine. There's now nine because they they merged. Uh, uh, handled, handled, the ball handled the ball now comes under obstructing, obstructing the, the field. field. Okay, handled I've, the ball with Jesus Blake's doing that every night. Come on. So there's, I'll tell you that here's the list of methods of dismissal. You get retired, bowled, caught, hit the ball twice, hit wicket, LBW, obstructing the field, run out, stumped, and timed out. Mm-hmm. No, mancad. No, mancad. It's run, okay. run out. So mancad is, is mentioned under the listing for run out, and it's called a special form of run out, and it then goes on to describe what a mancad is, and then says, this form of run out is called the mancad. The dismissed batsman is said to have been mancadded. Yeah, mm. but it goes, goes in... Uh, so it is a subset run out. of running it out. Goes in in I was just trying time. to work out whether I was wrong for the first time in my yes. life. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, you, so what... <laughs> take, your, take your time, Hamish. I know it's... I think, it's sh- I think... I know it's a shock, but... I felt I like I was a, wrong, but I think... Needs I think um, Nick has just proven me right. The, um, they want to, no, why no, don't they just say there's ten and a half modes of dismissal? Yeah. There's only nine. Touching, I'm touching. Only, of course, yeah, t- Charlie's right. There's actually only nine. Well, Wikipedia now, anyway. says goes, man. I don't make the rules. <laughs> oh, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, saying that list of dismissals is just. My, I don't think necessarily that Mancat is is the most. It's, it's definitely controversial. But it's just reminded me of one that I've been involved in. Timed out? Yes. <laughs> timed yes. out. What so is timed out? When you've got to go, you've got to go. go. But you, you need <laughs> Does to anyone go. ever get timed out for any other reason that they were on <laughs> the <laughs> toilet? Yes, that's happened. Oh, yeah. It right. actually happened to someone having, from my club Having a nervous one? <laughs> What are you saying? Is there any other reason, really, that everyone, anyone's ever oh, been look, sometimes happens than... because... I got, well, I got a story <laughs> on that. Please, because like, the, the black hasn't turned up. Yeah, I wasn't uh, yeah. at the game, but it happened to Macquarie Uni a couple of years ago. Some guy, I think, he was on the toilet, and they timed him out. Anyway, <laughs> the one that I was involved in, because that didn't happen in my grade back in England when I was, I don't know, sixteen. I was playing second eleven cricket, playing away at a, a lovely seaside town called Seaton, and um, I opened the bowling. I got somebody, a... got, somebody got to the beach. No, not quite. <laughs> no. I opened the bowl and I got a wicket in the first over, and then the number three batsman took ages to appear. And then when he, it had been two and a half minutes before he did appear, and that, the rule at the time was that within three minutes he had to be at the crease and taking guard. Yeah. Um, two and a half minutes, he still wasn't on the field. We were making noises about we were thinking of appealing. He appeared. Mm. He got to the edge of the square. Yeah. Stopped. Started mucking around with his helmet and his thigh pad and doing this, mate. It's been three and a half minutes now. We're going to appeal if you don't hurry up. Didn't do anything like that. So we asked the umpire, and what didn't make it very good was it was our umpire. <laughs> How long's it been, Richard? Four minutes. How's that? Out. Out. 
Oh, dear. And, oh, they blew Uproar. up. Oh, oh they dear. blew up. And uh, what we found out later, and this was the bit that made it hilarious for me, is that the guy who got timed out had been dropped to the second team from the first team Forget to get it. some batting time. Uh, <laughs> oh, dear. And well, got I, can I ask you the question? Sure. Looking back on that. You've, you've explained the story and almost felt like this bloke deserved to go. Oh, he did. But, yeah, there, there is spirit of the spirit yeah. of cricket. Yeah. Well, spirit of cricket, you I mean... given him a... Well, yeah. technically speaking, we only had to give him three minutes and we yeah. gave him four, so, four and four, a yeah. bit more. But, I mean, it, several can you warnings. say conversely, spirit of cricket, the guy, like, obviously dragging his feet to get out there? Yeah, like, he's on the you're, He's on the edge of the field, basically, right? Just taking his time? Oh, no, it, well, he came on the field and, and got to the stopped. edge of the square right. and stopped and mucked around with right. his gear for... Could, take, not, could, could have taken guard and then muck around and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Anyway. Um, we um, interestingly, I wanted to mention in this this listing for timed out, it says so far this method of taking a wicket has never happened in the history of Test cricket, and there have only been five occasions in all forms of first class cricket. So yep. timed out mm. is incredibly, oh, it's incredibly, it's incredibly very rare. rare. Yeah, it's very rare, but it did happen in a grade <laughs> game for St George. And we might have to tag the bloke that it happened uh, to. Um, <laughs> Give me that his info. His name dude. is Matt Baden. He's, oh, he's well known within yeah. our club. Now, here's another instance on how it can happen. It was a two-day game. He was um, not out overnight. And oh. then he was late to oh, the second no, day. No. Whether he slept in or whatnot is the story. He also won a, a trophy called the Golden Box Trophy for this one. For the most ridiculous thing to that happens all season. season. <laughs> I want to hear that story. So that is, that is a legitimate in, I think it was second grade. Uh, <laughs> district cricket, premier cricket. It has happened oh, in the last few years at St. George's Cricket Club. Right, shall we move on? Yeah. Why not? The one oh, hang on, what was the conclusion on the mancad? Was it right or was it wrong? Oh, yeah. It was bloody well wrong. We have a bloody right to say. <laughs> I think it was wrong <laughs> as well, but... Super Tramp. Just let us... Oh, I was, the, I was just going to say, just, just yeah. let us know what you think that song... That, what that song was from. Uh, yeah, where it's from. Where it was from. Um... It's probably wrong in the fact that he didn't warn him. If if Butler was like, you know, a long way out of his crease constantly and Ashman saw it and said, Look, mate, Josh, if you do it again, I'm gonna like I'm gonna mm. run you out yeah. and he continued to do it, yes. I think it was just the way that he did it that was the that, yeah. that left a pretty See, bad taste. My opinion for what it's worth, I think it was a legitimate mode of dismissal, however, not being gentlemanly but I'm not gonna use the word spirit of the cricket because Blommy will get up me and no one wants that. That he probably should have said, "All right, there's your one and only yeah. warning." And also the fact that, technically speaking, he wasn't. He wasn't. Yeah, trying, he wasn't he'd, attempting a run. No, he stopped. Ashwin stopped. So, waited for Butler to go out, and then took him off. Uh, the, the third umpire got it wrong, in my opinion, because they they referred it to the third umpire. Yeah. And then they went, "Oh yeah, okay, he's out of his crease. It's out." But then they thought about it and went, "Well, actually, he was still in his crease when the ball would have been bowled." I don't know how they. Are. Yeah, I don't um, know what the. I don't know what the. So I'm contrad- how the law is written in terms of how the third umpire can adjudicate yeah. on... See, I'm contradicting myself in that I think it was legitimate but wrong. <laughs> fair enough. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. It, well, something can be legitimate and you feel like it's not ethical for the game. That's totally... You've nailed it. Yeah. You've nailed it. But Well, but then con- you know, we go to the other side of that, you know, batsman taking a large advantage. But he wasn't. Not stronger. Yes, but I mean, that's why the man kid's there. So that's why that's what happened in the first place. So, yeah. I mean, especially in that T20 one-day games, like batsmen are, mm. are taking a big a big advantage the non striker getting out of their crease so they can so like they can said, get the a little warning so, doesn't go as well. It, a it reminds me of a good. clip I saw online the other day of a soccer match where a guy got a yellow card for a foul that didn't happen. The guy just fell down. Mm. Um, Diving. That happens actually. It wasn't a, a dive. Every just, game. The guy literally just tripped and, and his, his defender got carded for it. And so oh. when the PK came up, he knew it wasn't legit. Oh, that was Manchester City the, earlier this season. Wasn't uh, it? No, no, it might no, be another no, instance. It was, no, it's not, it, was a, it was in a youth this game. Was, was a, that's that's a, what a, I'm talking a, about. A, a, okay. a Galatasaray youth game, and then so the the ref awarded a penalty, and the guy took it, and he just deliberately he just he deliberately oh, missed okay. it, kicked it out to the corner out of respect for the ah, fact. I mean, he he had okay. total right to take that PK if he wanted to because yeah. it was part of the game, but he yeah. recognised that it was a bad call, mm. and so just missed the goal. I wonder. In the blowout, whether Ashwins had any remorse in regards to his actions, I don't or whether so. he's still captain of the, the no. blokes eleven. No, he's he's leading. No, no, he's fine. He's happy. Yeah, he's he's happy in those shoes. He's got no issues. All right, let's he's move no on issues. to Australia's newfound form in the one-day format of cricket. Domin- dominance. 
Because it creates a very, very interesting situation, doesn't it, Stuart? Charlie? Um, there's some form happening. There's runs on the board, but there's also two new players or two ex two players or coming or back in. However you want to put it, or so cuddles. So we've we what we've won eight one day games in a row. Eight in a row two overseas. Seri- two series overseas. Three against in in a, in the subcontinent where we're not good. Three against the the might and power of India. India who are ranked number one. Coming back from zero and two down. Yes. Um, so five, ni- five nil against Pakistan. The one intriguing one for me is the fact that. In their run of wins now, Finch, who's found some miraculous form after going through a woeful period, and Kwaja are averaging 64 at the top of the order. Now, that's the highest um, average from an opening pair over a run mm. in the history of Australian one-day cricket. Really? Now, where does Warner find a place at the top? Uh, and now, Warner's just scored an IPL century in saying that, so he's, it's not like he's 12, out of 12th form. man. Uh, yeah, so what's your opinions there? It's a, it's a real, real. It's a good problem to have. Good problem to have. Mm. I, I would oh. like, I would like to think. Look, I, I'm sure Smith and Warner will be in the squad, but I don't necessarily think that they should then automatically be a walk up start for, uh, you know, the the eleven. Yeah. Um, going back to the Australian summer, yes, because you know we we battled, but yeah. now, but now these guys have they've been obviously been working hard over over that time, and they've they've. They're producing the results. Yeah, you know, Kawhi just Kawhi just scoring runs. He scored, you know, a couple of hundreds. He could have got he could have got another hundred. He was he got ninety the other day. Finch has found his form again, and he's um, he's back in the top ten of the, the one day batsman. He scored like four. What did he score? Like four hundred and fifty odd runs in in that series. So mm. you don't want to you don't want to drop those blokes. Yeah, look, David's in. David's obviously in form. He's been hit runs in the IPL. So um, you know, that's it's good that if they do. Decide to, to put him in. He's obviously still, he's he's in some form, which would be good. But uh, I'd like to think that they would reward these players for working hard. Yeah. Um. At least early on. Um. And, so uh, see, for me, in. there is one spot that is available. Yeah. And that's potentially either they've had Hanscom or uh, Ashton Turner. Yeah. Um. That spot, but that's a lower in the batting order type of spot. So you'd say maybe Smith fields that, providing between. Now and then, he, is there any reason why David can't bat down in that order? Can't can't bat at six. Probably. We batted at six in the uh, 2013 Ashes over in England, didn't he? Mm. When he came yeah, back he into the back side in, after down, but let's, after no reason, punching Joe Root. Yes. Um, so I mean, I don't think there's any reason why he couldn't bat lower. Just to give you know that the you know, I mean, can you imagine Maxwell and Warner mm. coming in and batting together yeah, in that last there. 20 overs? Yeah. We could, we could, you know, could be uh, essentially a, a David Warner innings could win you a World Cup final. Yeah. As much as I hate to admit it, as well, uh, yes, we know David Warner is an opener, but he could bat anywhere. I think he could bat anywhere. Yeah. In mm. any situation, and or especially does, in a one day. Or does Kawaja drop to three? Maybe, but Warner could Warner could drop to three. Mm. Mm. That's why David couldn't drop, couldn't, couldn't bat at three. Yeah. I mean, I think at the moment. I mean, if you look, if you're looking at form, I think Smith is the one that's that's most likely to miss out. To be fair, he's not really scoring a great deal of runs in the IPL. I don't think his elbows quite come up as well as David's has. Yep. They both had surgery on, the, on, the, on their elbows, and obviously David's in better form than than Smith is. Um, and again, looking at the side and and the way that they're performing, um, if one of them goes straight back in, it's probably most likely to be Warner yeah. rather than Smith at this stage, I would have thought. Yeah, it's an intriguing situation, yeah. probably a space that uh, needs to be watched over time. Because, right. uh, yeah, yeah. It's, and it's the situation you'd rather be in. You, you'd yeah. rather be trying to find spots for blokes well, rather than rather than two trying months, to find blokes for two, spots. Two months ago, yeah, we were in. They were uh, basically we couldn't wait to have them back. You know, yeah, we were in no, we were in no state. How, we were, how times we have changed in the sport, uh, yeah. short space of time. Now, yeah. uh, just on that topic as well, the media mm. have been interesting in this. I, I don't know if you saw there was an article saying that the the four senior bowlers who had refused to potentially play that last Test match in South Africa after the yeah. uh, the Smith Warner Bancroft thing, yes. and then they've come out and said that is categorically not true. Yes. So who broke that story? Oh, is it Sydney Morning Herald? I yeah, think. it's Fairfax, Fairfax Papers. Fairfax yeah. Media, okay. Yeah. 
um, that broke that. Where has that story come from? This I know that's a rhetorical question. You can't answer that, Stu. I'm not aiming that at you. No idea. I'm not saying that you, you have the inside knowledge on this, but why and where do these stories come from? Well, they're just, they're just trying to rehash an old story that we should have walked away from six months ago. Yeah. Um, but obviously, they need to sell more newspapers. Let's but why is it the bad news sells? And that's not just exclusive to well, sport either. It's just well, what the world a, thrives well, on, mate. That's what, we like, that's what we like reading about. We don't like reading about good, unfortunately, good stories. Uh, about, yeah, that's what the interesting bit unfortunately, is. Unfortunately, so. from this podcast room, we're probably not going to change that. No, probably not. But, um, you never know. Yeah, it's just what just what, what happens here. So. Mm. That's one there of may my... Be, I don't know if there's... I don't know if half of it... You know, both, you know, there's half truth in both of it. That's one of my, um, my biggest bugbears with the media. And I'm not just talking about sport, uh, any topic. That well, the truth is not always what's reported to you. Not, not well, not completely. I mean, you've got it. Well, I don't think fake we're going to. I don't think we're going to have. I'm not sure we're going to have. A, I'm not sure we're going to have an ethical debate about. Journalism. As an American, I, mean, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. What, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to talk about ethics. It's fake yeah. news. We don't talk about <laughs> that. Yeah, um, yeah, ethics in journalism. I think. I mean, the journalist that wrote the story, I think, is is a good journalist. I don't. I think he would have done his. I think he would have done his homework. He wouldn't mm. have just written a story uh, and published it. You can't do that because you know, and then you could you can get sued. So. You there's will, obviously yeah. there obviously must be some half truths in in possibly so, both things. Maybe it wasn't refusing to play if Warner played. There might have been other. There might have just been some. There might have been half truths, and then Chinese whispers that sort uh, of thing. Yeah, and then you know a year later, you it's like you know someone's memory's a bit you know not yeah. as not as good as it was, and or sort of, well, there's an element so, of truth to it. Well, that's what I'm saying. They felt that they had to come out. That's what I'm saying. There probably is. That's what I'm saying. There's probably yeah. You know, it's probably you know fifty fifty truth. Uh, you know, bit of truth in both things. Mm. Um. We may never actually know the full details of what happened. Oh, until people decide that, to release a book. Oh. Until someone decides to release a book. So around Christmas time, they, you know, we should be we should be <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll let's move out. on to the Sheffield Shield final. Another season ends. Do we have to? Well, you know what? Right, I'll, I'll save these two. The, 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 as a the new, pain, because I'm Welshman? as a not a native New South Welshman. Mexico won the Sheffield Shield. <laughs> Victoria won the Sheffield Shield. Well, they were Shield. the, they were they were the better... Team team for the majority of the season. New South Wales put in a good performance to, to get there. Um, the game was dominated by, by Victoria. There was yep. some hope at various stages for New South Wales, but there's a few talking points out of out of the game and the season for me. I really enjoyed this season. Disappointed that it gets broken up for such a long period with the Big Bash season because yeah. I'm a bit of a, a, a fossil when it comes to what format of cricket I like. I I do enjoy the uh, the BBL. I don't really enjoy the other competitions around. I don't really get into the IPL. No. But the Sheffield Shield season, given that um, you know Australian cricket is looking for something at the moment, we're trying to build or whatever. Mm. Uh, I was quite interested in so with an Ashes series around the corner. I'm trying to uh, keep an eye on the Shield season to see you know where what direction we take with our selections and whatnot. There's a few things that have come up. Mm. Leading wicket taker for the series, Trent Copeland, fifty-two wickets. At the second, 18. the second I'm most sorry. amount of wickets taken by a New South Wales player in the history of the Sheffield Shield. Yeah, that's impressive. Irresistible, given good for English conditions. If we're going to talk about horses for courses, you would, you would have thought so. Yeah, is age an issue here? Are, are they going to hold back? He, he no, because no, they're going to pick. I mean, they're going to. They're probably going to pick Peter Siddle. So. I think Sid's is older than Copes. So there is form in regards to, to yeah. that with his selection. Mm. Now, how do you feel about this, boys? Uh, he didn't even play the whole season. No. He missed one game due to his um, TV. TV commitments, Commitment. which was yeah. an interesting one in itself. But yeah. uh, it didn't cost New South Wales because they still made the final and he still took 52 wickets. 52 wickets. What were his TV commitments them? for those who don't know? Oh, he's an analyst yeah. on Channel Seven for the cricket for the Test matches. Yeah, yeah, and he did a great he job a there. Job. Yep, he's he's um, future is looking, short up. Looking, looking good. One, yep. would, one would say, um, but one would also now uh, now say because I thought oh, Trent, he's probably got a year or two. Yeah, leading wicket taker for the the entire season's probably got more than just a year. I'd like to see him at least on the A tour that's yep. going over. That's going to be sort of played alongside the, the World Cup. I'd like yep. to at least see him on that on that tour. I think yep. he, I mean I think he deserves it. If you're talking about you want you want to pick blokes that can that can take wickets in English conditions. Um, you know he's that type. I think he's that type of that type of bowler. Yes, he doesn't bowl at 140 plus, but yeah, you know you've just got to be able to get it in the right area and do the right thing with it and use the conditions. And I think Trent, I think. 
every time Trent bowls, he proves that he that he does that. Like he takes he takes wickets out here on some flat decks using mm. the Kookaburra ball. He takes yeah. wickets all the time. Yeah. So you know if he gets a, a wicket and a and a ball that's a bit more conducive to some seed movement and a bit of swing, then he he could be a real handful. I I'd, I'd agree with that. I mean, um, just going slightly slight tangent as well though. Um, just in the Shield final, I'm not sure what he's done for the rest of the season, but I was really impressed by James Pattinson. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he's... So he's coming back. I mean, he's obviously been injured a lot. He's come back. He he bowled well. So, yeah, I mean, they're probably going to look at him because he bowls faster and, you know, he's... Mm. He's a great... I mean, he's a great bowler. He's been injured. Um, well, that's, so, that's the concern. So is it, again, do you take, you know, do you take him... Um, we've got a lot of bowlers. We've got a lot, well, got, we've got a lot, got of, we've got a lot of quick bowlers. I've got some statistics because you'd think Siddle versus Copeland yep. for that for that extra spot. But there's actually some other bowlers that deserve mention. The leading wicket takers for the Shield season, and these are some of the guys that probably should deserve a look as well. We obviously had Copeland at 52. Then he had Jackson Bird at 50 wickets. Yep. And he's there or thereabouts when it comes to selections. Scott Boland. Yep. 48 wickets. Chris Tremaine, 45 wickets. Uh, and then it drops off a little bit, but even Joe Many, 37 wickets at 19. Yeah. Uh, Siddle doesn't sort of um, factor in. A lot of people have been saying Sean Abbott maybe looks looks like he could, you know, put his hand up. 37 wickets at 22. Possibly. I think he's probably, I think he's a bit behind, you know, guys like, like you know, Copes and, um, and it, like Boland and Tremaine. Tremaine's been... Uh, one of Victoria's leading bowlers for for a few seasons now. It's not just yeah. one season. He's been bowling really well yeah. for for a couple of years, and same with Scott Boland. So yeah. um, we've got a lot of we've got a lot of pace options to pick from. Mm. You know, you have got Jai Richardson in in Western Australia, who um, obviously hurt his shoulder in that in that one day series against Pakistan. But apparently, okay, he's not as bad as it was. He doesn't need surgery, so which is, which is good. He probably won't make the World Cup team because um, he won't be ready. But he you know he might be available for the Ashes. He obviously played the last. Yeah, a few test matches out here against Sri Lanka and did it right. So we've got plenty of pace options if if you know guys like Stark and yeah. Hazelwood. Sort you of look don't at come you back. look at the sort of bowlers um, going back who have really done well in England. Yeah, guys like Terry Alderman. Yeah, Copeland sort of fits that mould, doesn't he? Well, you've only got you've only got to look at England themselves and yeah. you know Jimmy Anderson and he doesn't bowl he doesn't bowl 140 anymore. Yeah, um, and to be fair, neither does Stuart Broad, but. Yeah. Given the given the right conditions and the circumstances, they can cause a lot of trouble. Well, that's that's been a topic of, uh, of uh, debate in England in the in the last few years, and that is so rare that we produce bowlers that can bowl upwards of ninety miles an hour. Yeah, or one hundred and forty k's, whatever you order k's, yeah. the, the the mark is. Um, there was an interesting uh, article. I think Steve Finn either wrote it or contributed to it about. Well, that's probably because of the amount of county cricket that they play. It's four days a week, almost every week. Yeah. Then you got the break, obviously, for the 2020. They can't keep up that pace and that strain that goes through their body for that long. Yeah. Um, I personally uh, would like to see the, the English game go to more of a, a format like the Sheffield Shield. Um, because I, I personally think, and people do disagree, and they're, they're not wrong to disagree necessarily, their points are valid, that by having the two divisions, and I think it's 20... 22, I think I might be wrong there, first class teams. You've got 220 players at least. Yep. Mm. So, whereas in state cricket, you've got six yep. sides. So, you've got 66 players there that will be the best of the best that around was... Australia playing against each other. So, you've got Steve Smith, for example, batting for New South Wales against a few years ago Mitchell Johnson in Western Australia. Yeah. In county cricket, you've got Joe Root. Yeah. Batting against some bloke from Suffolk that you've never or Sussex that you've never heard of. Yeah, you yeah. know that was that was the debate when English cricket was probably at its lowest in the eighties and whatnot when Australia were giving them a good workover, mm. um, and they obviously then tinkered with the the divisions and stuff like that. But then, how do you counter that when for for a while there? English cricket is all of a sudden a lot stronger than well, yeah. Australian yeah. cricket. Well, you, yeah, you look at it the other way. Yeah, okay, you, you've got two hundred and twenty-two players to choose, and we've got sixty-six. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it, it like, works like, both ways. It works both ways. You'd like to think, I don't know, maybe is two hundred twenty-two like too many players? Yeah, you're going to get, mm. you know, does it dilute it a little bit? You're not going to have the 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 best of the best always. But well, it's the same with when we say sixty-six players. You've got to take out the people who are playing Test cricket, yep. one-day cricket, yeah, 
you know, mm. T Twenty cricket, wherever the national team happens to be at the time, mm. and even then, so like the top players, they're not playing a lot. Don't are they? play a lot. Are not playing a lot. So, you know, and then they've got the the, the other competitions. Yeah, just below that. Yeah, where they're trying to where they're trying to push players. them up. So the futures league and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. And, and with pace bowling, there's one guy who uh, a friend of mine who, who played a season at my at my club in England, but he played for a lot of counties in county cricket. And some of the papers that he's produced on fast bowling and the mechanics of fast bowling, and what's required, are so good mm. that people are taking advantage. In fact, I think he's he's what, what Steve Smith's IPL team. Uh, Rajasthan Royals. Yeah, he's coaching with them at the moment. Yeah, right. I literally just before we recorded the show, I went on Facebook and he's posted a selfie of them in the airport, and they're waiting on a ramp because they said if they wait in the the lounge, they get yeah, attacked by passengers. But yeah, and Steve Smith's there going, oh god, he's taking a photo. So Stephen Jones. <laughs> so for those of you that want to look into fast bowling and the mechanics behind it, and I think it's something that uh, you've probably seen as well. Stephen Jones's work on that is is amazing. Mm. Well, it's such uh, and a he's great worked area. with yeah. he's I worked guess, with he's worked with Hobart Hurricanes as well. Um, I, I think that him getting involved in the England setup that might produce more of the bowlers that bowl at that sort of pace. Mm. Now I, I've mentioned before I'm a big advocate for Jamie Overton. I'm biased because I used to play against him, and I, I, he's he's got pace. He's without doubt the quickest I've faced. And no, you're not going to pick your test team based on how quick I've faced. <laughs> but um, he's no, he's I wouldn't. he's got injury concerns, which is goes back to what we're saying. Are we overloading our fast bowlers, especially at a young age? Well, yeah. I mean, His twin brother Craig played in the last Ashes yeah. series down here as well, and Craig's a very handy cricketer. Um, I mean, he he bowls at eighty mile an hour himself, uh, and he can hold a stick for sure. Yeah, Craig was always the batsman of the two. Jamie was always the bowler. I guess so. I mean, the, it's not just about pace these days, though, because the batsmen are used to facing pace and they like it. It's about what you can do with it. So, well, I mean, if you just yeah. buy, if you just buy pace, then then you can go for you can go for plenty. You need to be able to do something with it. So. Yeah, but that that's why uh, Jimmy Anderson's great in English conditions. Yeah, but you bring that pace to somewhere like Australia or South Africa mm. or yeah, he, or even West Indies recently as well. He, he struggles a bit. Yeah, that, that that's where that extra yard of pace that helps you, can make the difference. Yeah. Now, heading back to the Shield season. Sorry. Um, trivia question for you. Who was the leading run scorer for the Shield season? Marcus Harris. Yes. So, <laughs> well done. Thanks. Do you know, can we do how many runs? Yeah, he, he uh, scored. About, what is it, 1,100 and something? Yeah, 1,188 at 69. At so um, that keeps his name well and truly up there. Well, that's obviously... in, yeah, the Ashes, uh, who are you, are you picking? Is it is it Warner and Harris to... Over the batting, yeah. Well, then you've had obviously Matthew Wade. One hundred and four. I mean, had an outstanding so, yeah, Harris situation. Harris, one hundred and forty-one in that first innings of the Shield final, part of the match. Well, yeah, you know, that was set set the game up well for Victoria. There's um, another irresistible situation there, working out for the Ashes in regards to the opening spots because you had Burns come in and do well. Yeah, Patterson come in uh, in the in the middle order there and and do well. Some interesting ones. Matthew Wade, 1,021 runs at 60. Uh, he had Alex will he, Doolan. Will he get a look in? Will he get a look in? Like, just purely he seems as, to have yeah, like, his... Purely as, a, purely as a batsman. I mean, I don't yeah. know if he sort of... if he, he may not be as aggressive as he was in terms of his, you know, his, his verbal banter. Yeah. Um, you know, which is what he was picked for in the first place. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's really... And then, obviously, his performances weren't, weren't that great. Um, but, I mean, he's... His entire season has been yeah, massive. Uh, well, the interesting one, Joe Burns, yeah. who's there mm. in the Australian team and, and did well against Sri Lanka, and you'd be thinking, does he keep his spot now? 685 runs at 38. Yeah. There weren't a lot of runs being scored up in, uh, in Brisbane, in were Brisbane. there? In Brisbane, no. It was a bit of a, a graveyard. Uh, Sheffield Shield Team of the Year, just quickly. Obviously, Marcus Harris at the top of the order with Alex Doolan. Will Pekofsky, there's another name. Yeah. And he's... he's he, scored uh, figures, 50, he scored 50 in the second dig in that Shield final. Figures are fairly impressive. Obviously, didn't play the whole year. No. There are other issues that came into play there. 649, but at 54. We see, I don't, I'm not sure... I'm not sure... I'm not... Uh, this might sound a bit harsh, but I'm not sure we need him right now. You know, like, he's, I don't think he needs to be rushed in like we were thinking he might need to do before when he was going to get picked for, to play for Sri Lanka. Again, these yeah. guys have gone away. They've worked hard and they're producing some runs and there's some guys that could probably play there. Yeah, picking for the so, 18. So, yeah, maybe going to the A tour. But, yeah. So I think we can just let Will, you know, play a few years of Shield cricket. He's only 18. I, I can, I can... Or, no, actually, I think he might, may be a bit older than that. But, like, he can go and play some Shield cricket and, and produce three or four seasons 
yep. averaging 50 yep. and scoring some runs and scoring yep. hundreds and, and getting that experience and then get him into a test team. Yeah, but we've, we've, we've sort of really been bloodying younger players of, of, of late, especially the New South Wales team. We, we stuck with Sanger and Edwards there yeah. and they made the Shield final. Um, so, yeah, that'll be an interesting one. Uh, then we had Curtis Patterson, 724 runs at 40. Matthew Wade uh, has been picked in this team as captain and wicketkeeper. Nick Maddinson, 563 runs, but at 80. At 80. Yeah, unlucky to obviously injury uh, ruled him out of the Shield final because otherwise, yep. yeah, otherwise he, would have, he would have been playing. Yep. Mm. And then you had Michael Nessa there as the, uh, the all-rounder. And then obviously Trent Copeland, Jackson Bird, Scott Boland, John Holland, Holland as a spinner, but I don't think we'll see John John Holland really threatening much with uh, Nathan Lyon. No, at the top there. So there it is. That's the Sheffield cheese, uh, Sheffield Shield season done and dusted. Don't Jeez, and dusted. say that quickly. Don't. It could be it could get nasty. Yep. Yep. All right. Now we've also okay. had it was also grand final weekend for all the the Premier competitions and the Shires competitions. So we'll quickly run through uh, the Premiers. There, we're obviously very happy about the result in the first grade competition here in New South Wales with Penrith, uh, Penrith, Penrith. playing Sydney University. Yep. We sponsor Penrith. Yes. And uh, Sydney University were the, the the form team all year. They were the minor premiers. Penrith caused a bit of an upset and knocked them over in the final to, to did, take, them, take out the Belvedere Cup. Got the well done, Penrith. For the first time, I think? No, first, first time, time in about 36, 30 years. First time 36 yeah. years. In a long time. Yeah, great win. Years, great yeah. win. A couple mm. of uh, the, the lads in the team use King Sport. There's one boy that we sponsor, Cameron Weir. Cameron Weir. Yep. Good on uh, you, Cam. Massive, massive season. Uh, Sydney University took out the club championship, had an outstanding year, yep. mm. taking out the, the minor premiership. 20 team competitions, keep in mind, in first grade, second grade, third grade, and fourth, and fourth grade. grade. Wow. Mm. In second grade, it looked like they were going to get done after Parramatta put on 300 odd. 385, I think it was. 384. And they like chased that. them down mm. <laughs> to take out Oops. the uh, second grade yep. premiership. And keep in mind, uh, I'm not sure where they played, but. It was a rainy Sydney, Sydney, ra- uh, Sydney Uni, though, Sydney Uni yeah. rainy Friday, wow. Friday night, Saturday morning. morning. A lot of the games were delayed, and there were some lower scores potentially because of the the rain. Yeah, didn't uh, didn't bother any of the teams out at Sydney University. Eastern Suburbs took out the third grade competition, a bit of a tight one. And yep. uh, hats off to our one of our fellow host of the the podcast here steve green who's one of the coaches out at eastern suburbs so assistant coach at East, uh, we yep. didn't see him at work yesterday for obvious reasons sure he was out celebrating that uh premiership so well done to eastern suburbs copious and, amounts of oak yeah yes. yeah so and and chocolate milk. one that i'm very proud of in fourth grade our uh, st george boys we also sponsor st george here at king's Row sports center they took out the fourth grade premiership uh, and that was a great, great game. game manly yeah. we were at that game at hurstville oval for for a bit uh after a rain delayed day one, day one, yeah. didn't, get on George, to, didn't get on until two thirty. Yeah, fifty one overs to play in the day. St George ended the day at none for one hundred and fifty nine. You would have thought this game's a lay down there for St George. Yeah, good old Manly. They bounced back with a vengeance, didn't they? Um, still, had to, still had to chase like three hundred and twenty four. Three hundred twenty four so off fifty five overs, fifty two or something, something like to, that. Yeah, to thereabouts. And I tell you what, oh, they gave it a red hot go. They gave it a. A good old crack, um, and fell just probably about twenty ones. But f- oh, I think it probably ended up, they probably about two eighty, so yeah. it's probably about forty, 40 short, runs short. They there. were, they were. <laughs> there was a lot of nervous. Great game. There was great a lot game. of nervous in George fans. Great yeah. game. Great cricket. Great cricket. Yeah. At fourth grade, and well done to Sutherland in fifth grade, who who won that one. They were the minor premiers, but it was close-ish. Yep. The Sutherland boys. Yeah, got it seven eight down or something. Yep. Now in the Shires competition, you boys obviously both um, follow the Shires closely as you both play in that competition. Yeah, but I haven't <laughs> played finals for a number of years. <laughs> Southern Districts once again. I didn't. Shouldn't have bothered. In first grade. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, that that was uh, like not was to take very, away from their very achievement. Rain affected. Yeah. Yeah. That game, that was a little bit by default. Yeah. I think that. that only one. I'm not sure if one team batted, but it basically no, no. They both they both, both batted. They okay. both bat, they both batted. Actually, like so, Sunday would have been quite a good night. So there was no play on on day one because of the right the heavy rain on on sort of Friday night, mm. Saturday morning. Yep. Um, they worked all day on the ground to get ready for for Sunday, and then they played. It was against Warringah and Southern District. Southern District's mm. are the, the the top team in the first grade comp. Yeah. Uh, Warringah made 
couple of hundred, like two hundred and twenty odd or yeah. something. And yeah. um, at the when stumps were called in the end of the day, like Southern Districts were, they were seven down. Yeah. Mm. So um, look, Southern District, um, we gave it a good a good crack to try and uh, to try and get the result. It's a funny situation because rain seems to have so much impact on the final series. Yeah. We're at the time of the year where it does it's get quite rainy, rainy in Sydney, but at the end of the day. The minor premiers or the leading team get rewarded, yeah, for, for their consistency over a whole season. The, the whole virtually six months, six months, months of months. cricket. Yeah. So, Southern Districts have come away with the premiership. There, they, yep. they yeah, yeah. No, nine times out of ten, they will be the higher ranked team in the yeah. in the grand final. And the reason I say that is if they lose their qualifying final, then they go to be in the the yeah, bottom they, ranked they team. Yeah, they, they, um, in the semi, but yeah, no, you, you're right. Uh, it's, you can't say they don't deserve it. They've they've been by far and away the best team in the competition for the last couple of years, yep. at least. Mm-hmm. Now, in second grade, we had Burwood, third grade Strathfield, fourth grade Burwood. Burwood have, have long been that's the, the fifth long... year in a row. I think it is fifth year fifth in a row, row that the they've won fourth grade, fourth grade, grade premiership. The comp, yeah, Burwood have won the fourth grade comp. They've been the, yeah, they won it the last five years in a row. Really? Mm. Yeah. Okay, they're dominating. They're there, dominating. So they're dominating that one. Yeah, I think it was might have been their seventh. Club championship or something that as well for Burwood, so yeah, and and uh, also of course you haven't got it written there, but we have to congratulate back along uh, George's River for winning the under twenty fours yep, as well. It was a nice result for us. And, and beat, Burwood, t- beat Burwood in something. <laughs> <laughs> and who took out the club championship? Burwood. Burwood. Yeah. Okay. Burwood. They've, they've probably um, they've won, dominated yeah. that for yep. a while there. Mm-hmm. Obviously doing some things right there, uh, and it's been some weeks now, but I suppose we should make mention of. Uh, the, the first grade premiers in the women's competition. I don't know we've done that in the in the previous shows, but Cam- that was Campbelltown, a rain, that was rain game. Affected. They yep. didn't play a ball. No, no. Campbelltown, Camden were the the minor premiers there. And got the got the job done. Well, <laughs> award the premiership Gordon. over Gordon. Yeah, over Gordon. Um, who might have, did they win it last year? Gordon, I think. I think they they've been they've been playing some two good years cricket. ago. Yeah. I think. Mm. Anyway, so write in and let us know. Yeah, well might done. be an opportune moment there. Maybe Just let. Give let and obviously, there was a lot more grand finals on around the country for 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 cricket. Yep. Um. So, let us know. Yeah. How, how your team? How your team went? If how you, did your you team got up? get on? We have got that hashtag KSC podcast. Obviously, uh, Facebook Kingsgrove Sports Centre, Instagram Kingsgrove Sports, and Twitter. Still not plural at yeah. Kingsgrove Sports. And you know what else I'd like to hear about? Uh, if there are any guys that use King Sport out there, yep. yeah, about your performances because we do have our own separate King Sport pages. Um, and we'd give you a plug if you would like to let us know of your uh, really good seasons or whatnot or good performances in the grand final. Yeah, absolutely. Send us a photo. Uh, send us a, th- a message on, on any of the platforms. Send those, yeah, you can send those to Kingsgrove or Kingsport has its, like Hamish was saying, we've got Kingsport Cricket on Instagram. It's Kingsport CKT mm. for cricket on Twitter and Kingsport Cricket on uh, Facebook as well. If you tag us in uh, with pictures of you in your good game, uh, with your Kingsport gear, we're more than happy to share that to our platforms as well. Very well much that so. probably wraps up the cricket season for now, but we'll be, yeah. we'll be uh, having plenty to talk about as the, the next month or World so Cup. World Cup's coming unfolds up, so before yes. the yep. World Cup. World Cup and then the Ashes. Enter retirement with the World Cup and Ashes. Mm, You're built it. Yep. Radio. Other sports? Other sports. Where do we want to go next? Well... It is football season. Uh, this, this, this situation, you, you blokes love those cars going round and round in yeah. circles there. The Grand Prix. Well, we've got, we've got, what's I mean, what's we've the got, latest well, Grand Prix got, news? Quick, I, I don't, still don't understand. We've, how. Got an, we've got an Aussie. We've got an Aussie. Aussie taking to the world and racing yep. around in Dan Ricardo. And it's, yep. look, it's not look. It's not gone well. Let's be honest. Yep. First, so, well, first look, two races have not gone well. He's not finished in both of them. So, well, so Formula One. Um, we'll little keep, bit of we'll background. Keep, we'll I, keep this. We'll keep this brief. We'll, we'll keep, keep it brief. brief. Yeah. I grew up near Silverstone. I love Formula One. I've been around it all my life. I've only ever been. Uh, bearing in mind, I live twenty minutes from Silverstone. Never once went to a Formula One Grand Prix at Silverstone. In fact, the only time I ever went to Silverstone was with my dad to the driving range down the road. There you go. Go and hit golf balls. Yep. I've been to Melbourne 2011. It's my only Formula One race. I am so excited at the moment. You're off to China. I'm off to China next week for, for the, the 1,000th the 1,000th Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Is, Grand Prix. Is, it, is it really the 1,000th wow. yeah. Grand Prix? So that's, that's momentous. That's why we chose China. That's the first time I've ever been excited by <laughs> the <Grand Prix. laughs> that racing. That's pretty awesome. Um, You're getting yeah. to go to that. That's why we that. chose China. I mean, if, if Germany had pulled their finger out a couple of years ago and honoured their contract, the 1,000th <laughs> Formula 1 race would have been in Melbourne. So it would have been a hell of a lot cheaper to go yeah, to. Yeah, no but, kidding. Uh, Can I just say, anyway. I can't say thousandth. Yeah, no, it's very hard thousand. to say. One, one thousand. Thousand. <laughs> it's very difficult to say. Thou, thou, thousand. Well, just say race number a thousand. 
Uh, no, yep. number 1,000. Yeah, it's very hard. It's 10 very times hard. 100. Um, no, I don't. Yeah, now, so... Yes. Uh, yeah, good maths, Hamish. <laughs> With this uh, this season, it looks to me like the Ferrari is the fastest car. By far and away, they didn't show that in Melbourne. Mm. Uh, and Mercedes, and particularly Valtteri Bottas. They'll be, they'll be, I mean, it'll be, it'll be Ferrari and uh, Mercedes. Yeah. Uh, Red Bull so Mer- might be in there. In, Mercedes walked you know, away with a dominant one-two in Melbourne. Man, these two guys, Nick. Man, I, I'm always surprised by who's just like super into Formula One. There's been three or four guys here. It's like, turns out they're just all mega into Formula One racing. Yeah. yeah. Man, the, the, the Williams SW14B no, no, is great. No, they, they, there's more turns anyway, and stuff. It's not NASCAR. Yeah, it's, it's not. not that, yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's not hey, man. So we won't get into that. Let me back off about that. NASCAR. Let yeah. me let me redo that. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> Sorry for there the you go. people that are NASCAR, yeah. I think NASCAR and cricket, uh, forgive me for saying this, <laughs> test cricket, like I've heard both sports are really, really great on a lazy Sunday afternoon when I just have something on TV and have a nap. I've had some of the best naps in my life with NASCAR going on in the background. Yeah. Have you seen that sort of mock like? interview with a NASCAR mechanic? And this is what we do. We set the steering wheel up so you can turn left this many degrees. Mm-hmm. And the guy goes, well, what if you want to turn right? And he goes, what? Why would you want to turn <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 I like. <laughs> <laughs> we really I'm got not him. Sure. I'm not sure if that was real. Uh, I'm still not going to watch. Just, like, I'm anyway. still not going to watch it. Though. But anyway. anyway, Formula One, uh, Ferrari came back strong in Bahrain until the race. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Sebastian Vettel got passed by Lewis Hamilton at one point, and then decided to spin it all on his own, and then lost his front wing, lost and then finished and then... way back. Yeah, Charles Leclerc. What a guy. So he had his debut season in Formula One last year for surely, the surely, surely, team. His, surely his nickname is Chocolate. Could be, could, could be. be. He's uh, he's from Monaco. He's, he's a from, Frenchman from uh, Monaco. He's and, from Monaco. And, and if he's not Caucasian, I do apologise. Oh, wasn't no, a racial no, 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 joke. No, no. <laughs> that wasn't a racial joke. <laughs> this used to be a family-friendly show. Uh, not anymore. Oh we'll have to put uh, but anyway, Charles Leclerc or Charles funny. Leclerc, however you want to pronounce it, Charles Leclerc. Uh, after a fantastic debut season for Sauber last year, um, he got signed up by Ferrari. Got a Ferrari. Goes, qualified, qualified on pole, was leading, was leading the race, was doing goes a great against, job, and then um, goes against the grain for Ferrari because they usually like to go with a driver who's got experience and and, and will uh, he's the next, he's the next big but, thing. You got to you got to sign him up. He was leading, and then he they the had a he had an yeah, issue with a car and engine engine trouble. He ended up finishing third. So MG, still a great, MGUH, still a great I think it still was. So result. that there's a in in Formula One for those. That's years, okay. I, I can we talk about the EPL? Wait, wait, I just want to. I just want to. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. told you that this car yeah. thing was only going to yeah. go for two minutes. I wanna, right, well, this I wanna is talk, two minutes. I wanna, no, no. I want to talk. About, I want to talk about the EPL. I, I don't. know you. I know you don't. But I, I don't. Do. But I, I, I don't. For, so for, anyway, for hang once, on. I want to talk let, about. Let us finish on the Formula One. So Charles Leclerc, <laughs> a superstar, <laughs> wake, leading. Wake me up when you're done. All right, Steve. So, well, Charles Leclerc, an absolute talent. He was leading and it was going really well. And then his MGUH failed. Now, for those of you who don't know, there's a, a system in Formula One cars where you recover energy to give you power. That failed. He's 40 kilometers an hour down on the straights. So got, Hamilton got comes past. past. Comes to, Lewis Hamilton, to, really classy, so, I he thought. Was, for, for Lewis, I'm not the biggest Lewis fan. He was very, he was very um, going complimentary, up the, very complimentary about Lewis and how he drove. Uh, uh, about Charles. About, sorry, about Charles. Yeah, and sorry, I just thought he was just talking about himself. Sorry. Yeah, no, so Lewis um, went out to him and said, "Look, you are going to have many, many chances to win in the future. You are a world champion of the of the future." And I thought that was really classy. The Formula One season very exciting. I cannot wait to get to China, and I'll give you a report when I get back that none of you will care about. Some, <laughs> some, maybe, three or four. Some may not. So moving on, let us know. Tell us. So what was this EPL business? Uh, so moving on to the NRL. Um, um, I think Liverpool, the Tigers. Liverpool beat so, Tottenham. So your team squared off on yeah. the weekend. Yeah. I did not know that Liverpool would sign Toby Alderweireld on a free in yeah. the 90th minute it's of the okay. game against Tottenham, where he scores an own goal. And we I'm not bitter. And, and uh, what's just made me even more... Oh, you you seem a bit Goal-Kibber bitter. Goal-Kibber I'm Goal-Kibber even more annoyed because I've just looked at my Goal-Kibber. phone and it said that Arsenal won this morning, which means that they go ahead of us in the table. Not oh, happy. No. no. Poor morning for him. Anyway, so what, so, what's yeah, the table yeah. look like at the moment, Stewie? Uh, well, Liverpool and Man City at the top. Mm. And, um, yeah, Arsenal it just, uh, just depends on how, how well we can... Finish off. So you've had a pretty good weekend of sport then, mate? Mm, yeah, some of it. Not a, always. A little bit of a segue for That's, me there. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on. Do you Had want you... this orange mic or? No. No, that's all right. <laughs> so you're um, highly touted. Congratulations. Tigers. Congratulations to the Canterbury Banks and Bulldogs who decided to play some football after two weeks. We, we won a game. Mm. We won a game. Now, that's the thing about the position that I'm in at the moment. Winning a game. <laughs> It's like winning, winning it's a like winning a grand final. <laughs> yeah. Not like these guys from Melbourne Storm who find winning probably boring. boring. We won a game. <laughs> or the Roosters. Um, yeah, so uh, great result. 
The NRL competition, how's it, uh, how's it looking for you? Who are you... I know you talked about it in the last show, but uh, after three rounds now, I think probably so. I mean, who are you fancying? Well, you're looking. So it's the Roosters in Melbourne, mm. and then it's a bit up and down for the rest of them. I think yeah. it's a bit sort of topsy turvy. So you've got those. I mean, the Roosters in Melbourne are a little bit out in front. Yeah, we'll see how how they go. See if they can get pegged back during the season. But oh. everybody else is sort of a bit bit up and down. Um, you know, the Dragons had a good win against the Broncos. Mm. Um, you know. Widdop gone. Widdop, Widdop go, but Widdop's gone, so I don't know how if that's going to be a blessing yeah. for them or not. I mean, the, he was playing at fullback, whether or not it was working for them. But so he's out. Um, you know, Corey Norman seems to be finding a bit of form. They played, they played well. Look, you know, South Sydney's doing the job. Yeah, they're going, they're going okay. Penrith's battling. Yeah, the Dogs were battling, but they're you know they're coming back. Yep. Um, the Raiders are, are just quietly doing their doing their business. Yeah, uh, you know, but the Knights are struggling. The Titans, the Titans are going to win the wooden spoon. I would have thought. I hope their, so. Their favourites, their favourites. I thought Parramatta spring. had it nailed on. No, they, no, they, no. They, they played. They, they played, they played two, okay. Two great yeah, runaway leaders. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, Manly are much better with uh, with Tommy Turvoy. What a, to what a turnaround back. that was. That is, now yeah. the talking point for me is Melbourne Storm. They just keep on getting the job done. This was the year that potentially they may have struggled a bit. No, Bellamy no. has yep. whipped them into shape. They've won the first three games of the season. Does this make him? The greatest coach in NRL history has he now uh, overtaken Wayne Bennett? I think they no, maybe not. I mean, he probably if they win the comp, mm. yeah. He, I think Bennett's still got more grand final victories than Bellamy, possibly. But Bellamy's had this one team, yeah. And uh, yeah. sure enough, he had the big players, yes. But now there's only one of the big three yeah. left, and they're still winning. So, I mean, Bennett has one with he's obviously one with Brisbane, but he's also one with St George, yeah. I mean, if South keep playing the way they're playing, they stay healthy and whatever, mm. they might win. So if he, yeah, so Bennett wins with South, he would have won with three teams. Yeah, Bellamy's only won with one. He's only been at one. He's only been at one, really. So and the fact that he hasn't been elsewhere and elsewhere and, 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 and taken fact- and taken taken that system to another yeah. to another club. So yeah. like, say he went to Newcastle. Yeah. And he took Newcastle, and they won the comp. Yeah, you know that would might make him a better. But keep in mind, and Bennett's in, older, in, but he has the, been at various stages been unwanted or had to move on yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, is that what you think? You have to go to multiple different clubs in order to be oh. count? Because the only reason I say it is well, you look you've at got, Alex you've Ferguson. Got, you got Ferguson. You got Alex Ferguson. So not necessarily. Not necessarily. There, like, no, there is. There, there is, is no salary cap in the yeah. EPL. Well, no. You can spend, yeah, and and I mean there is something to. To say to be able to stay at one club for so long and continue to be successful at that same club, mm. yeah, because sometimes you know players stop listening to the same messages and they get you know they get mm. bored and, and your ideas don't work. So if you're successful over a long period of the, at the club, then yeah, then you are a great you are a great coach. Yeah, mm. but if you can move to other clubs and make them successful, yeah, there's a bit of there's a bit of that going on. So um, predictions. Oh, as much as I hate to say it, it's probably a, you know it's. Melbourne, Roosters, South Sydney. South Sydney for me. With uh, with the Tigers coming around the outside and, and getting the job done. 2005 yeah. style. Yeah. Alrighty. I just feel like South Sydney have got something. Just I for... Don't, I don't know. I mean, none of, the, like, none of those three teams, are, I don't want to hear about that. No. Nah. That's, not, that's not great. Just for <laughs> poos and laughs, I'll go with Steve for now. I'll go with the East. Oh, anyway. Let's, uh, talk about, let's talk about something more, let's talk about something well, more we've exciting. Some, we've got some news at Kings Grove Sports Centre level. Yep. Yeah. Certainly do. Stu, so, this is your um, domain. so we've got a new a new website. We've we like to keep things fresh and exciting, and 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 keep changing things up to make things better for some s- for customers. Some serious um, work. So so great work from from Nick, who's uh, been a part of it, and also uh, Younger Killer, who has uh, changed our, our website. So we basically moved to a different a different platform, yeah. something a bit more bit Nick, more up, up Nick, to date. Nick, what can we expect? From well, the new website, what are the key features? Definitely mad props to Akilla. We worked with a company called The Hope Factory on this new website, and Akilla has been pretty much the person who's spearheaded all that project. So definitely big props to Akilla for the new website. Um, I would say the biggest thing is just how easy it is to use. Yeah. The the biggest improvements that we've made uh, have been on being able to find the things you're looking for very quickly, very easily. A search function that when as you begin to search for the product, it comes out with recommended products. Um, so the search functionality is hugely improved. Uh, so yeah, just easier to find all the sporting gear, the cricket bats, the soccer balls, the soccer boots, things that you're looking yeah. for. Mm. Never been easier to find uh, on kingsgrowsports.com.au. Well, go, super go, very nice. Go and check it super out. Super good. Um, we've obviously got uh, now other big news. Yep. Uh, in 
in the on the Ooh. store like on the storefront it is sounds where exciting. Yes, yes we're moving two stores. Yes. Due to, due to some circumstances, we've got well, to move two stores, so we're moving uh, the well, Newcastle store. And that's this happening week. now. This that's week, happening, that's happening now. Yep. So we're moving a, a, a new store. It's going to move to open on Broad when? Meadow. Uh, it should be open. Uh, I think around the eighth. I, I think it is I the eighth. About, about the eighth. Yeah. So we're for in, all the Novocastrians, yep. moving from Islington, <coughs> moving from Islington to, to Broad Meadow. Meadow. Yep. And which I believe is near closer to the stadium and the, okay. in Newcastle. The right. address twenty four Broad Meadow Road, Broad Meadow. For those of you that uh, yep. would like to go to the new store in Newcastle. So Nice, there. nice new bright store. So I've been working hard and getting that all, all done. So that should be um, that'll be great for the guys in in Newcastle. And uh, where else? And then next month we're moving our store um, from Artarman to Gordon. Right. So a big, a big, nice new location in Gordon uh, for all our North Shore customers. It's going to be it's going to be great. It's nice and big. The former. Uh, former, 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 yeah, Planet Sports store. So Planet that's Sports. it. It was at eight eight three eight Pacific Highway. Yeah, uh, went and in, checked it out the Gordon. other day. Yep. Looks, so looks, we're gonna have also gonna have uh, a couple, couple, of, couple of cricket nets in there, so we can do some coaching up there as well mm. um, for all, for all the young cricketers in uh, in the North Shore, which would be great. So yep. we're setting that up at the moment. So that should be uh, so that'd until, be great. Up until about Easter, I think you can still go to the Artarman store, yep. uh, and then after Easter, that that's the sort of week that we'll be transferring yep. across to Gordon. Just yeah, just um, sort of keep an eye on the sort of the the, the socials, the Facebook, the website. And we'll let Absolutely. you know when, um, when and things are closing and, and, and when things will reopen again. So Absolutely. And if there's any uh, questions you might have about that move, um, it shouldn't shouldn't be any contact. changes. You'll still be able to get the same things uh, yeah, and see the same, same stuff. people. Just, yeah, obviously in, in our time, uh, the, the Gordon one, you know, bigger, bigger and better for the guys that, the guys yep. at our time and, all, and all, our, all our wonderful customers in the North Shore. That's it. Any questions, don't hesitate to, to shoot us a message on those platforms that we, we mentioned earlier on. Now... What current specials have we've we got, got going, some, Stu? We've obviously got we've got some specials going on, um, you know, for the website and the moving and all, and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of cricket, um, we've got some great specials from uh, Gray Nichols at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them is the the Test Opener helmet. Um, so that's currently available for the special price of eighty five dollars. Uh, it's only about one hundred fifteen. But not only that, um, we are throwing in the Pro three hundred and sixty neck guard. <laughs> um, it did deserve some music. It was a great, yeah. So we're throwing in them the 360 net guard, which is normally about 40 bucks. We're doing that for free. Sweet. Um, so wow. for 85 bucks, you get the you get the chest open helmet, which you know you've seen guys like um, Sean Barsh, Marcus Stoinis, uh, Chris Lynn sort of wearing this helmet. Yeah, and you get the net guard for free, 85 bucks. So that's awesome. Uh, that's uh, we've got heaps of them. So that's gonna that's yep. get gonna yourself ready for, for, for next running for a, lo- uh, a long time. So if you need a new lid, come in. They're super comfortable. They're mm-hmm. great. Uh, we got a uh, Velocity 900 batting pads, mm-hmm. um, some adult size batting pads. So this is a great, that's a great pad again, sort of a $120 pad. So this yeah. one's super comfortable, you know, great protection. They're at 70 bucks, uh, so that's a super buy. They're a great, a great pad. And then for all the keepers out there, we've also got the Velocity 900 wiki keeping glove, um, an 80 dollar glove. So again, super, super glove. Now it's at awesome value, just 55. Excellent. $55. There's so many great deals available. Plus, there's uh, lots of, we've got lots more, lots more stuff in. So, like Nick said, if you check out uh, the website, there's a sale. There's a sale section, and you'll see all the stuff we've got. Get in sale. early for next. Get season. in early. Save get in some early. money. Save some money. Come on in. Come on into but the stores. Not Come only, not only, obviously, not only cricket for football. The football. So soccer, rugby. We've got. Uh, mm. It's kind of everything's ten percent off. Soccer season in Sydney soccer about on. to so kick off this weekend. Soccer actually. boots, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's good time. Soccer boots at ten percent off. Gold coming gloves at ten percent off. Gold coming jerseys at ten percent off. Shin pads, all sorts of stuff. Come and see us uh, now. Football, rugby league, rugby uh, union, whatever it might be. If netball. you're netball, netball. If you're still in need of some last minute equipment, cones, agility poles, even matching training balls, come and see us. Get in touch, and we'll certainly look after you and put together a good deal for you. Radio, gents. Is there anything else that we want to talk about? Nope. No, let's because go and do some work. Dusted. Yep. Alrighty. Hashtag KSC Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on the handles we gave you earlier. Thank you very much, gents. Thanks, Charlie. Right. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, producer Nick. No worries, guys. Thanks for joining us Thanks, today. Mate. Take care, guys. Bye bye.